On the evening of May 19, 1987, three young boys, two of whom were 11 and one of whom was 10, were sneaking through a small hole in a chain link fence to get into the Prospect Park Zoo in Brooklyn, New York. Now, it was after hours and the zoo was closed, but the boys knew that it needed to be closed for them to be able to do what they were planning on doing. They knew that there were only a few staff members who stayed after hours, and so they were easily able to penetrate that outer barrier, get into the zoo, and then navigate their way successfully through the zoo until they only almost came to their final destination, which was supposed to be the seal enclosure. You see, they had come up with this plan where they were going to sneak into the seal enclosure and go swimming in the pool where the seals were. And this would be an amazing story that they would never forget. They'd be able to tell their friends. It would be huge bragging rights, just something that they thought would be really cool. But just before they got to the seals, one of the boys stopped because he saw something that intrigued him much more than seals did. And he's looking up into this enclosure, into this den, where he sees these two massive animals sleeping. They were polar bears. A male named Teddy, he weighed 12 to 1400 pounds, and a female named Lucy, who weighed 900 pounds. Both the bears stood over eight feet tall. That's like two and three quarters meters or something like that. So he stops the other two boys, and he gives them a much bigger dare. He's like, you know what? Forget the seals. If you want bragging rights, let's go swimming in the moat with those things in their enclosure. And the other two boys initially agreed. They're like, yeah, that would be really cool. Because they can see that the bears are sleeping. And later it would come out that the boys thought, you know, these bears are probably really docile, lazy, slow creatures. And they're sleeping anyways, so what's the harm? So initially, all three boys agree. They strip off their clothes, they take off their pants, their shoes, lay them on the ground. And as they're about to go over the fence, one of the boys, he's like, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm not going in there. No way. So the other two boys, initially, they're like, uh, they're trying to convince him until one of the older boys, Juan Perez, he's like, no, you're going in. So he reaches down, he grabs all the boys' clothes, and he throws it over the fence and over the moat on the inside of the enclosure. So how this is set up is there's this eight-foot wrought iron fence. Directly on the other side of that, there's this water moat. And then on the other side of that, that's where you have all the rocks where the polar bears actually, you know, walk around on. So you've got rocks, water, fence. So he throws it over the fence, over the water moat, and just in with the polar bears, all their clothes. So he's like, well, you want to go get your clothes? And the other boy's like, still, no, I'm not going in there. So the other two boys, Juan and the other boy, they're like, okay, fine. So Juan and the other boy, they scale over the fence. They get on the other side, at which point the one who's not Juan, he's like, I'm staying here. I want at least this water in between me and those sleeping bears. I'm not crossing that water. So Juan, he's like, okay, fine. So he gets in the water and he swims across the moat. He gets to the other side and he gets up next to the clothes that he's thrown over there. When all of the boys notice that Teddy and Lucy are now awake and they're staring directly at Juan. They've been in this enclosure for like 30 years. They came to the zoo right after they were born in 1965, and they've been in there the entire time with nothing else in there with them ever. So nobody knows what these bears are going to do, but they would soon find out. Teddy immediately began making his way down to Juan without any hesitation. Lucy just stood there and stared, but Teddy, the male, he's going right for Juan. The boy who was still on the other side of the water, but in the enclosure, he scrambles up the fence and gets to the other side with the third boy. But Juan, who's right on the inside of the bear enclosure, right on the rocks with the bears, he just stands there and he freezes. He doesn't move at all. He doesn't retreat. He doesn't get in the water. He doesn't do anything. He just freezes with fear. And Teddy makes his way directly to Juan. He just grabs him in his mouth and he just starts thrashing him around. And Juan is screaming and he's yelling at the other two boys, go get help. It's biting me hard. That's exactly what he said verbatim, according to the boys. And the other two boys, they start screaming and they just start taking off running. Well, meanwhile, the park security can now hear all this screaming coming from the polar bears and they know something is wrong. So one of them immediately goes and calls police while one of the other ones runs over to the enclosure fast as he can. But by the time he gets there, all he sees is Teddy, the male polar bear, dragging this limp body up towards their den. So he goes and he runs to go get more help. And the police actually would show up pretty quickly. But by the time they got there, it was only minutes. But by that time, 
they arrived to just a horrific scene and it was far too late. That was evident right off the bat because Teddy and Lucy just had Juan's upper half, just his torso, like his stomach, chest, arms, and head. And they were doing a tug of war trying to get that. They had already consumed his entire lower half. They knew he was dead, but as they're looking at this situation thinking, well, we don't need to put these bears down because we're not saving anybody. Then they notice that there are three sets of boys' clothing inside this enclosure. There's like two different pairs of mismatching shoes with another third shoe, and then there's three pairs of shorts and whatever else there is, but they notice it's three distinct sets of boys' clothing. So now they're thinking there's three boys in there. Either the other two are already dead or they're up in those rocks in that den where we can't see them and they're hiding, but they're too afraid to call out because if they do, the bears are going to come get them. So the decision was made, we have to kill these bears. So the police, they got their 12 gauge shotguns. They shot the bears 20 times with shotgun slugs and they shot them six times with a 38 revolver before finally the bears finally succumbed to their injuries. They just laid down and they died. At which point police entered, they retrieved Juan's upper half, his remains. They retrieved the bears. They got the bears out of there because they wanted to do an autopsy or a necropsy on the bears because they cannot locate the other two boys who they think they know must have been in there. Well, they do this necropsy at about 11 o'clock at night and the coroner comes back along with the veterinarian and they say, no, it's just one inside these bears. There's no other two boys. Well, the boys, after getting home, their parents ended up taking them to the police station when they found out what happened. And that's how we know exactly what happened to Juan because the other two boys gave their account of what they witnessed. The Prospect Park Zoo was known at the time as one of the 10 worst zoos in the country. It was known for maltreatment of animals, or at least that was the accusation. They had very poor facilities that were too small for the animals. There were reports of malnourishment, and it was just a filthy place. There was broken glass everywhere. It was just not a good place for animals. It was shut down the year after in 1988. And then it went a five-year renovation, costing $37 million, and was then reopened as the Prospect Park Wildlife Preservation Center, where now it's a much nicer, cleaner facility, and they focus on caring for and preserving natural wildlife.